Hi guys. Don't you just love it when you start a vlog and your memory card fills up? Anyway, it's because I forgot I'd left um, previous videos on the card. I forgot to transfer them to the PC because I've only got an 8 gigabyte card on this. Should upgrade it really, but I don't really want to upgrade the memory card until I get a better camera, so... Anyway... <clears throat> um... As you know from the previous video, I was working on that Reebok bike, which uh, is no longer up here. That was taken down this morning, and uh, after I just made a couple of adjustments to the brakes, and had a very successful ride to Sainsbury's and back, so that's ready for sale. Gears are shifting up and down perfectly, and I didn't even have to adjust them. That was the beauty of it. I've just got to... Uh, give it a clean and take a decent picture or two of it and uh, I'll try it on eBay um, and then I decided I'd start on the Apollo suspension bike, my black and red suspension bike um, couldn't find the um, crank extractor, I still haven't found it, I don't know where the hell that's disappeared to um, so I had to use the old-fashioned method with a hammer and uh, bang, bang the crank off with a hammer, which I don't like doing. Um, one, if you've got good bearings, the shock of the hammer could uh, damage those. And two, you can damage your crank as well. You can damage your um, cogs on your crank if you miss on that side. If you actually miss the arm itself, which I have done before. So um, it's quite risky to use a hammer, and I'd only really recommend beating a crank off with a hammer if the crank is already knackered, you know, the teeth have gone on the sprockets or something, and you're going to replace it with a new one. Then you can just smash the shit out of it with a hammer and knock it off that way if you really want to. Although, like I said, I don't recommend it if you want to keep the crank. Unless you really have to, and... Uh, I honestly do not know where my crank extractor's gone. I had it up here last because um, I was uh, I thought I saw it for a second. I was um, working on the Rally Stonefly and I did the bottom bracket on that, and I'm pretty certain I did the bottom bracket up here because um, I found the 14 mil socket and ratchet that I used for the um, um, bolts that uh, hold the crank on in a carrier bag up here that I put in the bag ready to take downstairs so I'm pretty certain that if that was up here then I did the stoneflies bearings up here so somewhere up here I think I've said up here too many times now anyway somewhere in this flat is my um, crank extractor Anyway, I've got the bottom bracket off fine. Um, and I even got the um, bottom bracket too. The bottom bracket and the crank came off absolutely fine. And one thing that worries me, when the your um, bottom bracket has as much play in it as that one had, you do tend to wonder if the previous owner had rode the bike around for a long period of time like that without getting the bearings tightened up or at least replaced um, therefore ground out all the bearings and ground up all the bearing cages and possibly warped the um, bottom bracket as well thus you wouldn't be able to get your bottom bracket apart because I've had no end of bikes where I've had to scrap the frame because I couldn't get the bottom bracket cut off um, but this one came off perfectly fine and I could tell from the condition of the actual bearings although they had gone at least on the um, cog side of the bottom bracket the right hand side they were gone because when I took it apart at least three of the bearings fell out of the cage but the cages weren't damaged so I'd I'm guessing that the bike was probably laid up soon after those 
bottom bracket bearings went. So uh, that'll repair nice and easy. I've got some second-hand ones I can put in it. Because I'm doing that for myself, so I don't mind throwing some second-hand ones in there. I'll pick out the best pair I've got, because they're still perfectly usable. I wouldn't have kept them otherwise. So I'll just clean out the bottom bracket with a rag and clean out the cup, clean up the axle, clean up a pair of bearings, put new bearings on with fresh grease and put it all back together. Then all I've got to do is change the tyres, uh, set up the rear gears because they weren't working properly, change the left hand grip shift, reconnect the brakes and set the brakes up and it's done. I'll have myself a nice working full suspension mountain bike that cost five pounds from the recycle centre and uh, a bit of my time and labour and that's it. So if you do actually know what you're doing with a bike but you don't want to spend a fortune replacing one, go down the dump. Or the your local recycling centre. Because, uh, I don't know about the rest of the UK, but we do, like I've said before, we do have shops at some recycling centres around here. Uh, you do get receipts as well. I do have the receipt. So the police did stop me and say, oh, you're riding a stolen bike. I can just show the receipt and say, well, that's where I got it from. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not my fault if it's stolen. You never know. I've had that happen before where people have given me a bike or something that turns out to be stolen. Or I've found a bike dumped in town somewhere, all smashed up and battered, and that turns out to be stolen. Because that happened... Last year, I think, I um, retrieved a bike that had been dumped in town, all smashed up and battered. I repaired it and stuck it on eBay. And um, <laughs> the owner happened to see it. They were all right about it. We um, met up in a public place, which was their idea, which is a good idea. And um, I gave the bike back, and um, they actually gave me £20 in return as one for doing the repairs on the bike and three as a thank you so or two as a thank you three what did I get I missed two out duh <laughs> can't count anyway so yeah if I ever did come across a bike that was stolen I've always returned it, it you know I don't go nicking bikes that's one thing I've never ever done and never will do but uh, if I've ever had a bike given to me like I said, that turns out to be stolen. It's always been returned. I've only had it happen once. My bike was um, given to, but the person I got it from didn't even know it was stolen either. Because um, it was stolen by someone they knew. But they didn't know this person had actually stolen the bike in the first place. <laughs> so... Yeah, but that went back to its owner. I'm going back several years as well with that. Several, several years. <sighs> yeah, but I didn't get to finish the Apollo today because Mum turned up. We went round to the garage, put some petrol in the car. And then she asked me if I wanted to go over to her, so I said yes. Yeah. And uh, while I was over there, I was busy in the workshop again. Finished the electrics off. So we now have lighting in the um, wooden extension. Uh, put the socket that was hanging off the wall in the workshop back on the wall now. And uh, as a bit of added extra, I went up on a ladder and scraped all the shit out of the gutter. Because I think part of the roof leaking in a couple of places is down to the amount of crap that was on the roof. I don't think, because it's right under a couple of um, fir trees, so there's all the little um, bits that have fallen off that, has all just collected on the roof. I mean, on the roof itself, it was about that thick of crap, I ain't kidding, about an inch thick, that I managed to um, free off with a broom and a, gently with a rake, because it's a plastic roof, I didn't want to put the rake through the bloody roof. 
at least enough as it is. Um, scrape a load of crap off so the water could actually drain somewhere other than collect on the roof. Because obviously where the, um, I don't actually know what you'd call them, the leaves or whatever they are on a fir tree had fallen off and collected up. Because it hadn't been cleared for so long, it sort of started to rot down and compost. So um, it was acting like a sponge and soaking up the water when it rained. And it wasn't letting the water run off like it should. So I'm thinking the water was collecting and then leaking into the roof and into the workshop. Um, plus the guttering was the same. It just hadn't been cleared in years, I don't think, because it had composted in that as well. But that was really slimy to get out with my hands. But I figured if I do that, so the water's then got somewhere to run to, that it won't leak in the wooden lean-to either. Because right where the, um, the wooden extension joins to the, to the um, workshop, the gutter there leaked, and I think what was happening, the water was running into there, not being able to um, flow out of either end of the gutter, and just overflowing and leaking into the um, wooden extension. So uh, I'm hoping with all that cleared, it will reduce the amount the roof leaks anyway. So I think that's the only reason the floors have rotted in there. Because um, near around where that actually leaks, the floor has rotted a bit, so I think that's the culprit. Uh, we really need to take the flooring up so we can repair the floor, really, ideally before one of us falls through it. I'd actually rather it was me than my stepdad, because obviously my stepdad's got bad leg, bad back, bad everything, so that hurt him more than it would me. So at the pair of us, I'd rather it be me fall through the floor, but on a good day, I'd rather neither of us did it. <laughs> so, yeah, I was rather busy there today. I forgot to take the camera. I wanted to take the camera and forgot it. Um, so I'll take the camera next time we go over and show you exactly what I've done and what not. Um, brought a few wheels back with me as well. Just because it's easier than digging around in my shed here. So I'm going to need a couple of wheels for the Optima when I get round to that frame. Um, oh, bollocks, I didn't bring any tars. Oh, tit. That means I've got to empty out that shed here. Although I'm not desperate to do it, so... Not desperate. Oh, I'm going to sit down for a minute. Um... Uh, yeah, I was hoping to get the Apollo done today, but I can finish that tomorrow. Shouldn't take me long either. Um, I think the next time-consuming job will be that left-hand grip shift. Although hopefully I can reuse the gear cable that's already on it. Um, I've just got to remember to take the handlebar down that's up here because it's got the left hand grip shift on it that I need. Knowing me, I'll forget it and leave it up here. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, North Norfolk um, District Councils, or County Councils, I'm not sure which. Their contractors, Kia, are in the um, in the poor light again. Cause, uh, I think they're the ones that are um, contracted to resurface the footpaths in town. And uh, I've looked myself, and some of them really are piss poor. So... I think when the contract runs out, the council should find new contractors. Because they're not even doing the um, emptying the um, trash cans on schedule either. What the hell is grey sexual? So, so this post from the or this news article from the Huffington Post has just popped up in my news feed. 
which I've just realised is um, gone back to top stories, so I'm going to have to change that again. This man identifies as grey sexual. Here's what that means, so I'm going to click on that. Um, this bugs me. This bugs me with the news feed. I'll just get the cat out of my way. See, if I click on this little drop down here, it automatically goes to top stories, even if you change it to most recent. It'll only stay on most recent for a set length of time before it reverts back. I don't want it on top stories. Because top stories is mostly stuff from the pages you've liked and, well, any news um, Facebook pages that you've liked and things like that. Not your friends. And I was under the impression, you know, Facebook being social media, your friends should come first and your friends' posts. So I always have it set to most recent, which I wish it would fucking stay there. Because it really does piss me off when it doesn't. Pardon my French. But I don't know why it has to be set. So it automatically reverts back to top stories. That's just highly annoying to me. Because there's no end of posts from my friends. Important posts. You know, when I've had an important announcement, like, I don't know, they've lost a family member or a friend or something. And I don't get it until 24 hours later. Well, I might post at this time tonight and it'll pop up in my news feed tomorrow morning. You know, by which time it's sort of like too late and people probably think I'm an asshole for not replying. But I can't help it because I haven't seen that until too late. You know, Facebook really needs to um, sort out the news feed. Anyway, what is grey sexual? Oh, oh I be it looks like it's someone who doesn't want sex but wants the cuddles and the kisses and those sort of affections. Which I would probably say is me, to a degree. But, um, in fact, when I read the definitions of a lot of these sexualities, I could probably fall under several. So, <laughs> take my pick. Um, I've got videos there I've paused for um, Vlog and Life. I'll finish watching that in a bit. <laughs> emails, oh, run email. Bye. This always takes its time as well. Oh, there we go. Uh, the other email I commonly use is Outlook or Hotmail or Live, whatever you want to call it. For some reason, I clicked on it and it did nothing. Shall we try that again? There we go. No, it's just a load of notifications from a, from a, oh there's one here from a comic I follow and the rest is just from a forum I follow apart from the Eastern Daily Press. So, uh, I'll bring that up. At least there's no spam this time. The amount of spam I was getting seems to have uh, slowed down. Because a few months ago, me and my infinite wisdom got an email through Outlook.com um, for a Visa Vanquish um, credit card. So I thought I'd fill one out and apply. Bad fucking idea. Why? Because as soon as I did that, not only did it decline me, which I knew it would anyway, I was just bored, but uh, I got warmed with spam but not only on my um, 
Outlook account on my Yahoo account as well. I don't know why, because I didn't use the Yahoo account. But uh, anyway, the moral of the story is, don't fill out such crap online, because uh, they will sell your details, and that is how you end up getting swamped by spam, even though you don't hand out your email address willy-nilly. Because I don't. But uh, too many companies these days... Um, too many companies these days sell your details. I don't think they should be allowed to, but... Bugger all I can do to stop it. Okay, oh, you're doing pretty well, but um, I think I overdid it with dessert at Mum's. Stupid me. Mum asked if I wanted to take any apple pie home, and I declined because uh, I'd have been tempted to eat it, and then I'd be up all night feeling like shit, and then complaining because I feel like shit. So I thought I'd actually do myself a favour and decline the apple pie. <laughs> so I already had enough when I was there. I've had me um, diabetic pills, so I'm sitting around here on my on my thumbs all evening won't help. But when I'm in a flat like this, there isn't a lot I can actually do at this time of night. <laughs> I can't lump and bang around like I could do in the day because, uh, well, just that courtesy for my neighbours. You know, I do as I've said before, I do try my best. I'm not perfect, you know, I have knocked things over. So a ship break down there, he knocks things over, you know. But um, I have to say, I don't hear a peep out of my neighbours below me, or the neighbour across the hall from me. Not a thing. I do sometimes, if I now lie on the floor, I might hear the TV, but I have to lie on the floor to hear it. <laughs> and then that's only faintly, so... Um, but um, they puzzle me, because my neighbours below me, you know. They, I've been here six years, and I've never once seen the lounge or the bedroom light on. I've seen the kitchen and bathroom light on. They're the only lights I've actually seen on. I've not seen any of the other lights on. Not the hallway, not the bedroom, and not the lounge. I don't know, maybe they just like to sit in the dark like that. All I see is the light from the TV. TVs, because um, for some reason one watch a TV in the lounge and the other one watch it in the bedroom, I don't know. I suppose that allows them to watch, you know, their own programs, so, you know. I'm not saying it's bad what they do, of course not, you know, it's up to them. If that's what makes them happy at night, then, so, you know, good for them. It's just one of them things I've never been able to fathom. <clears throat> but then again, I probably do odd things as well, or things that people think are odd. So I, I should think most of us do at least something that someone else would think is odd. You know, there's probably plenty of things I do that people think is odd, <laughs> like collecting lights like that. I've still got to find a home for it yet. Uh, we do with another bookshelf like these. <sighs> but stand it in the bedroom somewhere. Yeah, I still haven't done the bulb up there, but there's enough light to see by. I only really need enough light just to see. And I've got the one on the wall. Oh, I found a spotlight I want to put up there as well. So I can do that at some point. That's going to be my next challenge when I've done the Apollo. I shouldn't leave the blades out on these, because they're sharp. The old-fashioned Stanley knife. Trust me, you don't want to catch your fingers on a Stanley knife. Bloody hell. Whatever that was, it just revved up, and then as soon as he let off the accelerator, all I heard was bang, 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 bang. 
not huge bangs, just like little separate pops. I don't know if that's just the way the bike is tuned or... Oh, I'm full of gas tonight, I keep burping. Yeah, my scrap still hasn't been collected because uh, one, I've been busy, and two, my guy forgot. <laughs> He's gone back home up north. So, um, that won't get done until next week when he's back down here. So, uh, no hurry. No hurry at all. I would like to, um, get it empty so I can get it painted for winter. And, uh, get the new wheels on. I've got a new, couple of new wheels in the shed and I've got some new wheels at Mum's. got lots of new wheels. New wheels coming up my backside. <clears throat> I might actually take a couple of those 24 inch wheels off the pile. Just so I've got a few kicking around, just in case. But, uh, like I said before, the 24 inch mountain bike wheels, we don't, I don't really use. And the only reason I want the 20 inch wheels is because I wanted a couple to replace on my trailer out front and uh, my friend has a much larger bike trailer as I've talked about before um, twin wheeled one so he's got four wheels and um, he does have a habit of bending them and buckling them because of the amount of weight he has in the trailer um, bike wheels really aren't the ideal type of wheel to use on that but they're cheap and easy enough to get so he uses 20 inch for that, so I do like to keep a collection of those and tires and tubes, mostly for him really. Uh, I'm surprised he hasn't come to me and asked for more yet. I've already given him a batch. But uh, yeah, every time I do get some, I keep them. That's a future project, preferably before the weather gets too bad. It's not too brilliant at the minute, but I'd rather get the trailer painted and sorted and done before it gets too bad. To do with a cover on it as well, actually, to keep bloody leaves out of it. But, uh, I suppose I could cut an old tarp to size, just so I can pull it over the top. It's right under those trees, and trust me, that will get full of leaves. And it's just, and just a pain, really, to keep emptying it out. And sticks, and I don't know what else. I don't know. I'll see if I find something I can make a cover with. Must have, I must be able to find an old tarpaulin somewhere. I could just cut. you looking for trouble? Or are you just in a mood to be a pain because I've left you again? I don't think he likes being left on his arm. Eep. Poor thing. <sighs> I'm getting tired so it won't be long before I go to bed. Uh, pour myself another drink in a minute. Lots of Coca-Cola, not alcohol. Simple, you know, man, I love you. Shut up. I didn't even hit play. <sighs> oh, here we go again. Uh, oh. Jeez, 8th of September already. Where's time going? If I blink anymore, Christmas will be here. <sighs> well, actually, I do have some news on the um, council front. As I've said in previous vlogs, the town council um, have till the end of December to vacate the current building over there because... Uh, JD Weatherspoons. I'm not actually sure if they have bought this land yet or are still interested in buying it, but um, 
either way, JD Weatherspoons are interested. And um, it's the North Norfolk District Council that own the land, so they gave our town council a year's notice to vacate the land, which is plenty of notice. Um, but the funny thing is, they were obviously looking for um, a suitable building or property to go to, and that is one not far from here. Literally, it's about a five-minute walk, sort of, in that general direction. It's an old doctor's surgery, which was being used for children's services. So it's a um, NHS-owned building, and it's currently sitting empty. And has been empty, well, actually, I'm not sure. I know it's been empty for at least a couple of years. Now, earlier this year, I and several other people on the um, Regenerate North Walsham group and the Town Council group, when this was discussed, suggested the um, old Children's Services building. But um, apparently that was not an option, we were told, because it's too far away from the town centre. I'm not sure why that is an issue, but... Um, well, that was the main reason. They wanted something closer to the town centre. Um, I've never understood why. But now, the NNDC have put a bid on that old children's service building in order to move the town council and the citizens' advice and the community transport service that all use this building as an office down to that building, so long as they get, you know, the bid accepted, I hope. Because um, they've got to the end of December. But I'm thinking, if the NNDC did that in the first place, then this building would have been empty, Witherspoons would have bought it and put through the planning permission to build whatever it is they want to bloody do out there. I've given up care, and if they want to build a restaurant out there, then... So be it, because um, I've heard a lot about J.D. Weatherspoons, and it's all been positive. A couple of the odd negative here and there, but also most of it has been positive. And it's going to generate a fair few jobs, so there's that bonus, and that's one thing this town does need. So I'm willing to sacrifice my, well, I don't really have a friggin' view really to sacrifice, do I? So... But, uh, yeah, I can put up staring at a new building, I think. I've stared at these old buildings long enough, so I'm sure I can manage a new building. <laughs> but, yeah, if I'd have gone for the um, old children's services building months ago, then this would have been sorted months ago. But, uh, never mind. That is how our councils work. Badly. I mean, that children's service building is not only a large enough building, it's only a ground floor building, but it's probably got the same sort of number of rooms as uh, this one. They could easily house the town council and the citizens' advice. Most people that use the citizens' advice drive up here anyway. Most. And to be honest, walking to it, to where the children's service building is wouldn't be a problem anyway. It's it's easy to get to and pretty straightforward to walk to anyway. You know, and it's probably a couple of minutes from the town centre, so if people are too lazy to walk a couple of minutes, then that's their problem. <laughs> Not that I find the citizens' advice to be that much use anyway. They pretty much tell you the sort of... Um, things you could look up on the internet anyway, but uh, I suppose it's good if you haven't got the internet, or if you want, you know, a solid bit of a, you know, a second opinion or some solid advice, you know, rather than rely on some random crap you could read online. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um... So, probably by this time, well, come January, I doubt I'll see any cars or any activity on here, because, like I said, they've got to be out.
by the end of December. Oh, pardon me. Um, so 12 months really is, should have been ample time to um, find another building or property to use. Because, um, I don't actually know why the town council wanted to be closer to the town centre to begin with. Because they don't really do anything apart from hold their meetings in the um, chambers over there, which is just basically this big room on the end of the building where the uh, street light is. That's all I ever see them do. Um, I mean, the most common people I see going in and out of the building is the um, community transport service, volunteer drivers, and other volunteers. Uh, and the cab office gets used, that's it. But, um, well, for all I know, the town councillors might use the building during the day, I don't know. Um, but not that I've noticed, so I'm, I don't really understand why they want to be closer to town. I don't see what difference it would make, as long as I've got somewhere to hold their meetings and, I mean, as I said, that children's services building is plenty big enough to hold all three of these um, tenants, I suppose you could call them, as um, the town council, oh, not the town council, the um, district council rented it out to them. Um, ouch. Uh, yeah. But the children's services building is big enough itself. I've got a huge parking area. There's plenty of area to um, install some wooden sheds around the back or something for storing the town's Christmas lights or whatever else. So, <laughs> I'd have um, taken that option ages ago, personally. Oh, pardon me. But, uh, reasons best known to themselves. Yeah. I've just realised the video is clipped over. Yeah. So I'm probably going to be like a little uh, stutter in the middle of the video now. Um, it just seems daft that they've left it this long, to be honest. Well, we September, October, November. To, that's three months, three and a half months they've got to uh, find somewhere. Oh well. Well, actually, they won't have to find some way if um, they can get the old children's services building. I hope they do. So, um, this sort because this was pretty much held it up. The quicker the town council could have gone out, like I said, the quicker this could have gone ahead. Oh, for bloody no, I've got wind coming out of that end now. I don't know if I dare do that to her. I might follow through. I blame Mum's cooking. <laughs> right, nice gammon steak, chips and beans for dinner. That was gorgeous. <sighs> Something tells me the cat wants attention. That's what he usually does that for. And who doesn't want feeding? Because I do that. That's one of the first things I do when I um, get home, wherever, wherever I've been, as soon as I get home, I feed the puss puss. My puss puss. I went off with the bloody screen uh, Anyway, to recap, tomorrow's tasks will be to finish the Apollo, weather permitting. If it's pissing down with rain, I won't be out there. Um, Oh, I sorted the steering out on my Claude Butler. It didn't you need um, sealed bearings. What I needed was the correct um, cone to go in the top. Now, I've got the correct cone in there. That works fine. But there's meant to be like a rubber, rubber dust cover that goes around the outside, which is missing. So it does look a bit weird at the minute, because you can see a gap into the bearings. Um, but I don't know where, I'm sure I had the dust cover for that, it must be in the box somewhere. I'll have a look, if I can find it, I'll put it on. 
But uh, yeah, there's no wobble there now. The only wobble is from the forks themselves, where the springs are in the tubes. For some reason, that wobble when I break there, but there's nothing I can do about that. That'll just. I plan to swap the forks for a better pair eventually, anyway, so. But, uh, yeah, that's perfectly usable now. Without, um, any play in the steering whatsoever. So, lesson learned. Make sure you've got the right cone in the top. <laughs> Tried everything before with the other cone. Oh well. I just need to find that rubber dust cover. Or plastic dust cover. I think it's a rubber one. I'm not supposed to have one. Oh well, I'll find it. Uh, once I've done... I don't know what I'm going to do after I've done the Apollo. I've got a choice. I could either do the Hercules sitting in here. Or I could do the Optima. Or I could just find something else to do that's not bike related. Oh yeah, and I've got to put that bike, the um, Reebok, up for sale. I need to take the camera down, take a photo of it, and take some measurements of it. I need to measure the frame. Oh, this has got the frames. Some of them actually have the frame size um, on a sticker on them. So I'll check the stickers. But if not, I'll just have to take the tape measure and measure it. So, I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. I don't mind either way. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe as I do try to get videos up at least every day. Or try to. No guarantee, but I do try to. Or at least every other day. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again in the next video.